Nintendo Switch. That Thank was for everything I could ask for. A lot more surprises than you'd expect. Some great new games of uh, of long running franchises that are getting new releases on the on the Switch. Let's see. How long is your break? Your lunch break, Cat? Because we might be able to run through our, our our recap here pretty quickly. Hi, everyone. I'm Doug Bowser from Nintendo of America. Hi, Doug. And I'm here with Nate Bildorf, you're not, who leads our. You're not going to sue me. Look, I'm next to you on the As stream. You know, okay. At this Nintendo, me, Nate. We're all about creating experiences. Thirty minutes. We could we could do it. We could rush through. There you go. So say, this is the. I found myself. This is the treehouse. Entire presentation. So, We'll we'll host this after we go offline today, to but to we're gonna go back through the direct exactly. now and talk Maybe about a little bit of incredible. what we uh, so many questions. Where do we start? What, did you what we've got <laughs> here. So we're gonna go back to the direct itself. Scan through, scrub through here. Yeah, but I mean, first I'll let I'll let this play for just a second. First, first thoughts afterwards. You know, just on a pure, like, high-quality, exciting, you know, interesting and still pretty varied release schedule. Like, hands down, the best of, especially the major publishers, the best presentation of E3, for sure. Um, you know, I think some of those indie showcases still might come out on top, just for... I was going to say, of official E3? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, 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 just in, in terms of just shotgun blast, like, I think when you say you're doing 75 games in your showcase, it's kind of hard to beat, like, in terms of, like, just, you're going to catch someone in that blast, you know, somewhere. Um, but this was, yeah. And even then, I think Nintendo's fighting right on the top there, even against some of those, just because these are such beloved franchises as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I'm again. I I had read some reports from folks, uh, and even had Monster Hunter. <laughs> I had been reading reports from folks last night that were basically saying like, "Hey guys, really pump the brakes. Like, I don't think it's gonna be everything you want it to be. Like, calm down." And that was things that had things I didn't know I wanted, didn't think would be coming in it, and they all looked amazing. That was the other thing is like there were some big new announcements. That not only are coming this year, but looked so good. Yeah, like almost everything in this is this year. Yeah, yeah. What almost Breath of the Wild is like the only thing. Breath of the Wild, um, Mario and Rabbits, and uh, they briefly mentioned Just Dance twenty twenty two. I think those are all the ones. Well, that comes out this year too. Does it? Yeah, they, it's it's like the sports games. They call it the next year because okay. it comes out later in the year, but then re goes through. You know, well, yeah, just like two things year. for next year. Yeah, like sixty percent of it is October. Yikes! Yeah, we'll go through that as we go through our notes here, and watch what was shown. Jeez, World, same as pretty much every Nintendo other showcase. Nintendo Everything is, is super, super, super heavy in like June, July, and October. It's 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 nutty. It's gonna be wild. It has to. It must have to do with the business quarters and stuff. I I don't know for I don't know them off the top of my head, so I don't know. But all right, so they open things out. They know what people want to know right away, and they opened out with the new Smash character reveal. They wasted no time. Um, find a game that suits your personal well, I'll let I'll, I'll here I'll I'll skip ahead hey, to get to the actual <laughs> reveal here. So immediately you're like Ganon, whoa, what is this? Breath of the Wild, and then it's goofy. You see this this chiseled chest, and I go, wait a second, this is Kazuya from Tekken. Sure enough, <laughs> you recognized him by his chiseled chest. Yeah, I knew it was Tekken after as soon as I saw that chest, but I forgot his name. But there he is, Kazuya. From Tekken is is the new character in Smash, uh, throwing people into the volcano is the the big thing here. Um, they had a little bit of a showcase of his moves and stuff after the trailer. Uh, a fighting game icon. It's only fitting. Uh, people still want things you know like Sora and still dreaming about Goku and all kinds of stuff. But you know this just it really does just make sense to have some fitting game uh, fight fitting game. 
fighting game characters. This is this is the best part of the <laughs> teaser. He just starts throwing all of the Smash characters into the volcano. <laughs> I love that. It gets stuck. The humor. The humor in the Smash reveals is unmatched. It's, it's, it's... They know what they're doing here. They know it's goofy. And it, it's, it, it looks amazing. Um, they also kind of showed in here that Heihachi might be... He's in, he's in the game now, somehow. That's his dad. He may just be a stage. Oh, he's just a stage element. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, see, he's just like sitting there the whole time. So he's not a playable in any way. Yeah, we need all the big titty boyfriends. I was really hoping we'd have Kazuma Kiryu one day. The lead character in uh, Yakuza would be a great Smash character. For sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I don't this have... This was the best part of yeah. the trailer. <laughs> I don't have a ton of connection to the character, but... It's Smash reveals still find a way to be appealing to everyone, even if you don't care about the character, Hello, if you don't really I'm play anymore. And, and the director just, of the yeah. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate claps. Claps. Oh. Great way to open the show. Then they had a kind of confusing uh, uh, trailer. It didn't help that we were also switching over the streams. We were watching on YouTube at the beginning. The audio sync was way out of whack, so we switched over to Twitch. And so they, yeah, so at, before that, though, they did have, like, a little bit of a <clears throat> move showcase. So I think basically this is showing, hey, we got all his classic moves from Tekken in Smash. So, you know, if you're a fan, don't, don't wait. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's the one that Fern missed as well. <laughs> oh, wait, we missed this. June 28th, 7 a.m. is the, the big oh, Sakurai... Uh, breakdown, which usually means the character comes out like that day as well. So, Did you say June 28th? Yeah. Please goodbye to Mom Toy chat. Say goodbye to Mom Toy. Bye, Mom Toy. Good job, chat. All right, so the next game. Your choices matter. I guess I would say we would have known right out the gate hearing that. Yeah. Um, but see, there's this trailer. Oh, look at chat. Everyone's saying bye to Mom Toy. Um, there's this trailer that I, as soon as we hopped in, because we, we, this is, this is basically where we hopped in. I was like, is this Life is Strange? I don't think so. Wait, is it? And the art style was totally different. So I was like, what's going on? There's the protagonist of the first game. Ignoring the second game, by the way. But, and then this is the new, the character from the new game, True Colors. And I was like, whoa, what is this anime character crossover? And then it's just, oh, it's just a fun trailer to announce that the remaster and the new game are coming to the Switch. Yeah. Which is... It was weird, but I'm not mad about it. I know, I'm not mad. Uh, I just remember, with the confusion of us coming into it, we got excited thinking, like, some weird anime Life is Strange spinoff was coming. Love to see all the babes together. Yeah. So exciting. Hopefully 2 comes to Switch at some point. Life uh, is strange. True colors. Ripped Watch 2 right now. Like 2 kind of feels like off off on the side with all the love for 1 uh, before the storm and now True Colors. Yeah. All that trauma in one game. Uh, then they announced uh, a, a little bit of a, a montage here, Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's the, a cloud gaming version, so you need to have a stable internet connection to run it because the Switch can't run it on its own. Switch Pro might, but uh, still haven't announced that, so... <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of, that's, I guess, maybe the one surprise, that they didn't have any tease, even, at least, of like, hey... We'll have some hardware news coming in the in the next month or so or something. Yeah, I, Nothing. I thought for sure it would get a mention. Because it's all but confirmed now. The Worms game coming to Switch as well. Super fun. It was a PS5 plus, uh, PlayStation Plus game uh, at launch. Super fun. It's just a fun time. It's very different from the Worms games of the of, of old. But uh, it's good. Uh, oh, I thought the whole game. You, that's just the costume. The costume is available free for two weeks. Okay. Yeah, this is where I was just trying to catch up. Yeah. When I didn't Here it is. Astria Ascending. Raggle Muffin. There you go. So yeah, this is very.
very much evoking vanillaware, very dense and beautiful, hand painted, uh, just artistry on display here. September 30th, that's a great, that looks amazing. I don't know if that's only on the Switch, but it looks amazing. Two Point Campus seems like a slam dunk decision for the Switch. Like, uh, management games on the whole, I think, are, are sneaky, probably sneaky good on the Switch. Portably being able to just get through this. Like, I really, one game I really want on the Switch that I don't have is Civ Civilization. Like, imagining playing those turn by turn experiences on the Switch just seems like super chill. You know, you don't even have to really pay too much attention. Um, so it just makes sense. We're just rolling with the, we're just replaying the direct and talking over it as we go here. But, uh, this was exciting. This was, this is kind of. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. You'll squish your invertebrate enrollment. I went to pause it. I you can't go. believe you've done this. Um, this is kind of representative of a lot of the games that ended up being, uh, revealed throughout the show of, you know, here's a classic franchise. We're remaking and remastering, uh, a few of the games and bundling some them together, but we're adding some new stuff too. Like this is kind of representative of a lot of the take the the the, the games that were shown throughout the show. So this is what is it called? Monkey Ball. Ch -ch -ch -ch. It's the 20th anniversary. <laughs> Fern does not have the name of it on the notes. That's fine. Sorry. Uh, I think it's called like Banana Blitz. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. It's, banana it's banana. Super Monkey Ball One, Two, and Deluxe remastered and bundled. Um, all the all the the mini games from those games are together. Banana Mania, Banana Blitz was the last one that just came out. Okay. I mean, it looks great. It looks great. There's not much to say here. If you love, if you haven't really checked out the Monkey Ball games, I I recommend it. If you if you saw there, one of my favorite parts of the Monkey Ball games is the mini games. Oh come on, what is this skipping? It's so fast. Oh, there you go. So there's like a home run game, a pool game, a soccer game. The mini games are super fun in the Monkey Ball series. So yeah, that's coming uh, October 5th. One of 10 games coming out in October for the Switch, apparently. <laughs> Nintendo wants October for themselves. And this was the first one that really, this was the first Nathan just starts screaming without really explaining himself and then Tries to catch everyone up on why he's so excited. <laughs> but this was Mario Party. I do not have Does not have a name as well. <laughs> Superstars. Um, ultimate banana. The, the top banana. Um, all right, Kat, hopefully you can at least st st stick around for a little bit longer in your, on your <laughs> at your desk. But yeah, this collects... Not only over a hundred mini games from the entire franchise, but several, I think four or five maps from uh, a variety of the past games. Um, just looks, and like, it's it's not just a, a recreation of those mini games, like, or I mean, it is a recreation of those mini games, but like, they just look stunning uh, on the Switch here. Just look, it, it, online play, they got everything working here. other party goers worldwide. It just looks great. It just looks great. Can't wait. Again, everyone buy this. Let's all play together. I do like they just confirmed you can play with randoms, which uh, is not as fun, but hey, if you're vibing with Mario Party for the day and you want to really play it, you can hop on uh, with some randoms. What did you think? I liked it. <laughs> the next one was pretty big. So, uh, Metroid Prime 4, they were like, hey, we're still working on it. But in the meantime, we've got this for you. And it's Metroid 5, Metroid Dread. Uh, a, a new follow up, uh, a new release in the 2D series of Metroid games. Uh, it's been way too long. They remade Metroid 2. Samus Returns uh, on the uh, 3DS, but we left we left the 3DS behind years ago. 
And so to, to be able to, to hop back into the 2D Metroid style here with Metroid Dread. And the title really... <laughs> They reminds me of this like, cat meme, the cat that's like standing <laughs> with its arms on its side, at its side. Uh, to, to be able to return to 2D Metroid and in such an interesting way here, like they, it's called Metroid Dread. These horrifying monsters are changed. Look at this, this shot right here. Horrifying. That's pretty disturbing. But that is coming October 8th. So what is that? That's like three days after the monkey ball game. Like, what is going on with October for the Switch? If you like all of these games and you're a Switch owner, just don't spend any money for the rest of the year and drop it all in October. Get ready um, to sacrifice your whole wallet. It seems they're bringing uh, elements of Metroid 2 as Samus Returns into this one, where uh, Samus now has like some melee attacks she's got. It's not just about uh, shooting and running. I like this little stealth thing they had there where you... If you stand still, it won't notice you. <laughs> it just looks good. I can't wait. There will be footage of this in the treehouse. Could be happening now. I hope not, because I would love to check that out as well. Yeah, can't wait. Metroid Dread. What a great name. Fits the vibes that they sold in that, that footage completely. Just slam dunk. Then they had the first, the first part where we... I think we just spent it most of the time just talking about the Metroid game we just seen because the next section was there's a familiar franchise's return and I was like oh what's gonna happen what kind of game and it's they started Just Dance okay cool November fourth you're excited cool good for you <laughs> again I'll I'll say this for Just Dance there's a lot more in there than you expect. Uh, they, 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 they fill these games out. They're not just cheap cash grabs. Like, there's a lot going on. And they're fun. They're fun. The, arcade smash hit, Cruisin Blast. the next uh, reveal was Cruisin' Blast. A nice uh, return to the classic Cruisin' Arcade game. Friends, you can play as a unicorn. Yeah, I guess I'd have to see the full lineup. The, the, you're right. The music didn't really compel me in Just Dance. Yeah, I know. I'd have to see the full lineup. But yeah, cruising. Not the most exciting announcement, but fun. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot with the entire first batch of DLC. The New Power Awakens DLC um, coming September 24th. Oh yeah, that's true. If you also, Ragamuffin, do you remember, not only Katy Perry and Megan Trainor kind of amp, but they had uh, Todrick Hall as well, who... <laughs> Ragamuffin, let us know, does not pay uh, his dancers often. So that was rough, rough three uh, artists to reveal alongside your... your <laughs> yeah, DBZ Kakarot looks... It is amazing, uh, having played it. It's been out for a while. If you haven't checked it out yet, totally worth checking out on the Switch. Mario Golf Super Rush. It's coming so soon. It's, it's hard to get any more excited. Um, it just looks fun. They showcase a lot of the modes. Probably the most exciting thing they announced here, though, is towards the end. Yeah, Bowser. I was going to say, as they showed him just there. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Can we get it? We can, get, can we get there? Um, Bowser looking guy, like Guy Fieri on the links. Ah, uh, it's, it's not showing back up. Well, there we go. There we go. There he is running around. But I think the big announcement here were the free updates. They said there will be new courses and characters added. That's New Donk City from Mario Odyssey. So that's cool to see that um, playable. You get to run around New Donk City and play golf. Super cool. Come on, June 25th. It's right around the corner, 10 days away. I, I've been kind of dominating this con this conversation here. Oh, go for it. Uh, Fern, what, what, uh, of what you've seen so far, we'll, we'll take a... Here's a Fern break. Uh, Nobody was asking for this, Nate. They they all want it. Of, of what was shown up to this point, what is uh, most intriguing to you? Mario Golf. <laughs> Mario Golf only? Yeah. I'm not the Nintendo fanboy like you. Like, they're all cool, but, like, I, you know, this wasn't my youth or anything. I like, know, I, but. I don't know all of these 
familiar franchises. But so. as a, you are a Switch owner. I am. What, what? So Mario Golf's the only one you're really looking forward to playing? Um, uh, I'm sure I'll be playing the Mario Party Superstars as well. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Hell yeah, Raggle Muffin confirms Rastria Ascending is also on PC. So not going to be locked to the Switch. Nice. Which, with all that beautiful hand-drawn art and, like, moving pieces, could have gotten choppy on the Switch. I'm sure. Uh, so, good to know I can play it on PC and have no worries. Because it looks beautiful. Uh, they, they next showcase another game that's... It, around the corner ish. I don't. I don't remember if Monster. Uh, crunchy. <laughs> yeah, definitely crunchy. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories Two. I don't know. I don't remember if the release date had been announced prior to this, but it's coming July 9th uh, with a free demo coming June 25th, where the data crosses over into the full release. I love that trend, by the way. That's such a great. Uh, thing that uh, the Switch specifically has been doing a lot of, giving you s a big, substantial demos where you can play like multiple hours of the experience, where you don't have to worry about it. Like, re you know, one of the worst things about playing some demos is you know you're gonna have to like replay that section when the full game comes out, and it's kind of like, yeah, that's, that sucks, you know. Yeah, but especially if it's coming out so soon after. Yeah. But here it's like, no, you're playing the first hour of the game and, and you know, you can just kick back up, you know, after that when you get the full game. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, they've, they Raglamon was talking about the constant free updates and stuff to the, the Monster Hunter games. They confirmed there will be some new con or some content, I think, for this at some point. Um, super exciting. And then came... The next big Nathan screams really loud. You like screamed and grabbed my shoulder at the silhouette, and I was like, I don't know where this is. The in <laughs> it's happening again. Here, I'm just gonna let it play. <laughs> Here's a oh! The classic goggles on top of his head. WarioWare is back with WarioWare. Who am I? No, <laughs> all the ones that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to dive into. What was it called? I have no idea. Um, but it's it's a whole new uh, style of minigame collection here, where it's it's all character driven. It's all using these little characters to to, to interact with the minigames, and there's. You get to play as all the different characters that have been in the Warrior franchise so far, and they all have different ways that they play. And that's super cool, and uh, that means there are multiple different ways to accomplish any mini game, which is super. It's different, and on top of that, there are two player mini games as well, which is a great addition to an already like fun party experience. Normally, you know, you would just have to pass the controller around back and forth while you played a WarioWare game. But uh, the fact that it's just multiplayer now is is great. Get it together. That's right. Coming on September 10th. That you said you didn't. Oh, it's like towards the end. I didn't even notice. September 10th, 2021. Yeah, the, there's so much variety because like you could play a mini game with one character and experience it one way. Here, well, I'll just let it run back again. You know, they they showcase it here with the apple tree as the main one. But like, yeah, you. Each time you play a mini game, if you're playing as a different character, you're kind of not sure what you have, like how that character is going to solve the mission, you know. And so, like that kind of, I hope there's a mode where you not only are going through a bunch of different mini games, but also it randomizes your character each time, so that you're kind of having to figure out both the mini game and the character, the character way to figure it out, you know, it would be fun. Um, yeah, no, I'm just incredibly excited. September, get to play it before everything comes out in, in October. I'm glad they gave it its own month. <laughs> just, yeah, uh, a, a, a great announcement. Um, WarioWare is a fantastic minigame collection. It's just, ah, I love that announcement. After that, they finally gave us 
The release date for Shin Megami Tensei. Tensei. Tensei? I forgot. I forgot. Tensei 5. Uh, finally got a release date. Um, again, I think this game was announced pretty much alongside the Switch way back when. Uh, as one of the big, hey, get a Switch because then you'll be able to get this game exclusively on the Switch. Um, and it's coming November 12th. November 12th is when you can get this game. Another token. Look at this sick transformation of character here. This, this where angels and demons buttoned up uh, schoolboy turns into a beautiful being with luscious blue locks. Um, as a big fan of the Persona series, uh, excited to finally give Shin Megami Tensei, Tense, Tensei, I keep wanting to go tenth side for some reason. Uh, a, a, a more substantial look. I've, I I want to play the fourth game, um, it, which has got an HD remaster recently on PC and Switch. Um, but yeah, this looks great. This looks great. Look at Naho Bino N B N B non-binary main character. Just saying. Pro tag Naho Bino non-binary. That's what that means, right? In Japanese. <laughs> Uncovered the deep dark secret. You may be able to yeah, I mean, it just it looks beautiful. It actually looks really good uh, for the Switch, <laughs> which is always sad to say. That it's like, wow, that looks great for the Switch, you know. Uh, you you almost That's true though. You almost wish you could see a lot of these developers working with unleashed hardware. That's why everyone was hoping the Pro would get announced so that you could see some of these games really flourish. But uh, instead, we're stuck with the Switch versions here, the regular Switch versions. Yeah, November uh, November twelfth. I'm excited. It's not like my big freak out moment kind of game, but uh, I'll definitely play it. Another demon yeah, for sure. They, they, the Switch finds ways to leverage uh, the power that they do have, you know, to do some stuff. But uh, you can just tell. Look at some of these chunky, chunky animations for some character reveals here. Not great. Um, after that, we had Danganronpa Decadence, which is a collection of four games. So it's Danganronpa 1, 2, three and a board game experience that i guess was in three we have not been able to play three yet <laughs> yeah. but there's a board game experience that was in three that they have expanded into its own game and so the physical release uh by smt okay i was like dangaropa breath of the wild the only way out of this intriguing <laughs> No, but yeah, uh, so bundled together uh, in a physical release, you can only get them all together on in physical, but you can get them individually digitally. Um, so fun. I think, again, another great... There's just some games that seem like perfect for the Switch. This is one of them. I think it's also... It, it, it goes in line with this game. I think this is a great mobile game, even, you know? I think, you know, being able to play a game like this on the go is just a smart decision all around. Um, Agreed. And yeah, this board game, I have no idea what it is. It looks hilarious and goofy and like, there's like RPG mechanics too, like, and it's all framed as like this summer camping, summer camp experience for all the different characters from uh, the entire series. I, I'm, if there's anything I'm 100% gonna buy right out the gate, it's this. <laughs> because uh, I have Danganronpa 1 and 2 on Steam, so getting the bundle seems a little weird. I should just get three on Steam and, you know, play those. But the board game, for sure. Uh, no release date. It's just available later this year. Then another great... Hey, welcome back to the fold. Uh... Uh, another one of those games that was stuck on the Wii U that was pretty, you know, the Wii U widely considered kind of trash for most people. And so, uh, <laughs> Fatal Frame seemed like it was just going to die on the Wii U. A, a, a storied horror game franchise kind of left to, to die there. 
Also, Jammy, if you if let's let's look back at this. We were talking about maybe this has gyro controls. Look at the way the the frame here is moving as the character. You see that it, like tilted. Looks like that could be some gyro controls there. Um, but yeah, look 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 like Fatal Frame might might have gone to die on on the Wii U and it was never gonna come back. This was the last game, but here it is. It's on the Switch. Go out, support this release, and maybe we get more Fatal Frame. What a, a, a like. I'm I'm super happy about that. Super happy about that. These games and DLC then there were some. Uh, hey, you played. You probably played this somewhere else already, but it's coming to the Switch now. So Doom Eternal, Ancient Gods DLC. Still crazy to me that this game runs on a Switch at all. You can tell in this trailer if you if you haven't seen what Doom Eternal or Doom looks like on the Switch, you can see how low res it is especially compared to the pc and and playstation releases but uh you know <laughs> at least it runs <laughs> and then there was uh tony hawk pro skater 1 and 2 the the remake that recently came out i'm gonna get on my soapbox again like i always do when activision announces something new fuck activision Every development studio over there is pretty much entirely working on uh, Call of Duty and Call of Duty only. And so the developers behind this amazing, like, dedicated, you could tell they put their heart and soul into this remake of Tony Hawk 1 and 2. They, they said, that was great. Thanks, y'all. Now you're going to come work on Call of Duty. The developers behind the Crash Bundle Crash Bandicoot bundle, and then the new Crash Bandicoot game, which was amazing as well, like a great return to form for the series. They said, oh, you're done with that. Come work on Call of Duty. Like, Activision can go fuck off. It's so sad, because and now they're going to milk, you know, Tony Hawk here on the Switch for some extra, some extra cash, but it's unlikely we'll see more, you know. Uh, there's more games in the series that could totally get remastered. I will say, there was apparently a uh, a member of one of the bands that is featured in Tony Hawk who said, hey, we're working on the next Tony Hawk game. And so, maybe there's something going on. I, maybe Activision is actually lending the IP back out to other developers, um, which they could start doing instead of having their internal teams work on it. Um Fingers crossed, but on the whole, fuck Activision. Let's continue. Uh, I was saying that this is a great Switch game as well. Um, just hop into a session, play a, play play a few minutes. Like uh, the 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 whole uh, arc of some of the missions or the maps is like they're timed. So play one timed, you know, mission and and get some high scores and hop out. You know, like it's the perfect perfect for the switch then there was strange brigade been out for literally years at this point on pc and it, it was intriguing when i first heard about it then it released and i feel like no one was talking about it which you know was a little bit off-putting it's a co-op uh, experience very indiana jones you know getting through through dungeons and, and and mining for treasures and puzzles and all kinds of stuff neat I just haven't played it, and if I were to play it, I don't think I'd play it on Switch. So, you know, this was... It's today. It's out today, that's true. I, that was probably the low point of the con of the show. Yeah. But it was still, again, like that Tony Hawk thing is like, oh, great, great idea for the Switch. Um, but yeah, definitely the, like oh, the weakest point. And then they had footage of Mario and Rabbids, Sparks of Hope on Switch. Not a ton new here. They're just kind of showcasing it, being like, hey, if you didn't hear, we got Mario and Rabbids is back. Um, some new, I think there's some new little seconds of gameplay here. Um, yeah, just, just excited. I, I, I said during the stream, I was so excited by the announcement because I really, I always wanted to play the first game and never did that I went ahead and grabbed it on, on sale physically. And that'll be coming close to my birthday, actually, which is kind of a, a nice little surprise birthday gift for myself. Uh, yeah, Sparks of Hope. Looking forward to that. And then 
the next get hype moment for the little, little baby Nate. As soon as you see the Orange Star Nation, I shriek. Advanced Wars is back, baby. Advanced Wars. Oh, damn. What was this one? Ah, Reboot Camp. Reboot Camp, I think is what it was called. Advanced Wars 1 and 2 from the Game Boy Advance remade and remastered for the Switch. Just, it looks amazing. This uh, The 3D art is great here. I love the classic. I do love the classic pixel art. It's some of the best pixel art out in the biz. But yeah, this looks amazing. I love, yeah, you're right, Raggle Muffin. I love the little animations in their uh, portraits here. If you look on the top right here, this guy gets shelled and he, he starts sweating. He starts sweating, he's freaking out. It's just uh, one of the best uh, tactic strategy uh, games out there. Um, it's the it's fire emblem for the for the the war generation. <laughs> Anime vibes, just yeah, amazing, amazing announcement here. People, I saw someone trying to summon advanced advanced wars today. I was like, you fool! How's that gonna happen? Here it was. Here it was. Segment will be our last announcement. Never give up hope. Um. This next segment was hilarious because it felt it 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 had to be a little bit of a troll job, right? Because they say this next segment is our last announcement of the day, and then please take a look. Yeah, and he's like, get, get excited, and everyone goes, oh, Breath of the Wild two, and then it opens, and it's Hyrule Warriors two: Age of Calamity DLC, and you're going, wait, what the fuck? Uh, excuse me. I was I was expecting Breath of the Wild too, and you offer me this plate of beefaroni. <laughs> um, that said, I was like, "Oh, that's fun! You get to play as a guardian." Link has this like cool new uh, weapon set, and the big reveal at the end of this trailer was that Zelda there you can see joins the painting and is a playable character uh, some point in the future here. I don't know if it's Wave One or Two. I don't know, but. Oh wait, Zelda! You can't play Zelda already. Hello there, I'm Ag Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda. I guess it's just that she gets the motorcycle. What you've just seen is a trailer for the first wave of DLC um, for the Hyrule Warriors. Age very of funny though that they they Koei did that because one of the things people wanted from Breath of the Wild too was to be able to play Zelda. So it's funny to like that took place show that, especially considering you're not sure if Wild. this is just how the show is going to end or not, you know, and be like, really, this is. Uh, I have a few more things to share. With but uh. Alnuma came out and said, don't worry, I got more. Showcase Skyward Sword HD. Again, not much to say here. It looks really good. The the very, like, uh, watercolor, almost, paint, uh, paint style and art style of this game um, really looks great on the Switch. And I can't wait to play it. I never played it when it came out because I, I, a lot of Nintendo games I really did miss out on. I did not have a Wii or Wii U. Um, the Switch is the first major uh, Nintendo console that I've owned in years. I, I pretty much carried a 3DS with me for or a 3DS and, and DS with me for a while, and that was like my only Nintendo source. Uh, yeah, excited to be able to play that. This is a Game and Watch system. Then there was the Game and Watch with Legend of Zelda, the original Zelda Two. Uh, what is that? Adventure of Link, something of Link. Well, uh, and what was the other thing? Oh, uh, so we've been working on this Link's Awakening. You're right, Link's Awakening, and uh, a classic and Game and Watch game that was called like Mole Hunter or something. I forget what it what it was, and it's but it's star. It has Link's little sprite in there instead of the original character that they had on the old Game and Watch. The Adventure Link. I was right. Um, just a, a cute collectible again. This is a hundred percent for like major collectors slash fans. Uh, I think they're about like I I think I remember the first one that had Mario stuff in it, about seventy to eighty bucks or something like that. So it's just like hard to hard to consider dropping that cash on it. Um, but cute nonetheless. The cute little clock, interactable interactive clock and interactive timer that you can do that are. Based in Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, respectively. Just cute. Yeah, just all around good vibes. 
And then Aonuma said, both of them by taking control of Link. Daddy made you some content. And showed us. We oh, oh, oh. It's not fast forwarding. Whenever and wherever you'd like. How dare you? I refuse to what? <gasps> it cut off. <laughs> what? Why did they cut that? <laughs> they tricked me. No, it's it's not them. It's it's I was specifically grabbing it just the, the VOD had cut off at that point, so I grabbed the VOD. The narrative of this game, which Oh damn it, the first game they showed was dread! So punishing with the in turn red. Oh, it looks so good. Like Samus. Holy shit. That's one I'd watch you play. I assume you play it. And we're just gonna. And we've been unable to so Aonuma, Aonuma, not Aonuma, Aonuma fed us with some beautiful looking Breath of the Wild 2 footage. Still no official title, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. Was hoping for that at least. And we're gonna just kind of let that play and then we'll talk briefly about it at the end and then uh, wrap up for the, the, the wrap up here. Um. Yeah, we'll just let this beautiful footage play. I'll t I'll probably talk during it because I, I want to bring up some things. But uh, thing with you in that time, I'll, I'll turn the However, audio up a little bit because I want to hear this music and stuff. Progressing. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit more of the game. Please take a look. I'll say, chat. We didn't get taken down. We didn't get a. It could be that we get a major copyright strike on this as soon as it's done. But uh, so Link in the first trailer was getting corrupted by something on his arm and some shit went down. So I think this confirms to me Zelda is not going to be around. The the first trailer or the the estimate or the the big predictions I said I was just going to let it play but no, we're just going to talk. <laughs> the the predictions coming out of the first trailer were Link and Zelda were actually going to be teaming up and working together. And what it looks like is that's probably just the opening of the game. Right? You, you, Link and Zelda, go down into this cave and discover this ancient evil that's resting. Link gets corrupted in his arm. And potentially, as you can see, he has long, nice long hair now. Uh, wakes up and realizes, oh god, and what, another hundred years might have just passed? Fuck. Uh, and Zelda probably needs saving. She fell into a hole. She probably needs saving again. Like, she's probably gone. Or maybe she'll be like, maybe as you explore what now stands as Hyrule, uh, you'll start hearing rumors of this masked character who's saving people left and right. And, like, Zelda's gone, like, rogue. And she's, like, lost it because she thinks Link's dead or something. You know, something weird like that. Uh... <laughs> um... But, yeah. So, yeah. The first shot is... Link jumping through the sky. He's got his corrupted arm. It's all like it's. It seems like it's stone or something, right? Like, so that's interesting. That I wonder if that jumping off of the if that's going to be in the first game. There was the plat, like the big. You walked up to the edge of a plateau and like saw the world. I wonder if jumping off for the first time is going to be that version of that. Uh, and so yeah, that that was the big thing here is that uh, in the in the first or. Uh, the other big prediction after the first trailer was, oh, we're going under Hyrule. We're going into a cave system underneath Hyrule. And <laughs> Nintendo said, fuck you, we're going into the sky. And so there's like floating islands and stuff going on. Yeah, some interesting time reversal mechanics. Clearly Link's new arm has some, some new stuff that let, let, it lets him do, like grapple hooking into certain points it looks like. Minna, that would be fascinating to bring Minna back. Hyrule Castle is now floating, which again, I guess ties back into all the flying things that are going on. You're going to have to fly into Hyrule Castle again. It's kind of funny that, yeah, it, it seems like it's the same setup. You know, Link wakes up potentially after some time. His hair's grown out. He's got to, you know, go find where Zelda is. He's got to get to Hyrule Castle and defeat Ganon again. Um, so what did you think? This time around, yeah, the man. setting for the adventure uh, it has looks been expanded amazing. the skies above Hyrule. I've been I consider like myself fed. Longer. Uh, uh, I am I am ready to, you know, go into hibernation a little bit longer for Breath of the Wild 2. It's coming 2022. 
So probably won't see anything until late this year. If we see it again, it'll be later this year, like towards the holiday season, maybe at the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley's big baby. Uh, that was a weird. <laughs> but, you know, I think that would be where we see Breath of the Wild reemerge, potentially maybe get a title then, maybe get a month at least tied to that 2022, and then get ready for the, the big year of Zelda. Hooray. What yeah, it just gives me time to play the first one because I haven't played it. Yeah, it's it's good. And I think it's the kind of game, you know, I think sometimes there's you, you have those worries of like, you know, can I can I play like just in terms of like, you know the more, you know, action heavy, you know, games and I think uh, Breath of the Wild is super super accessible to all folks, so yeah, I'm excited for you to check that out because I think you'd you'd really like it. It's it's just a beautiful experience where you know you're just roaming the, these these wild lands and, and and looking out at look, looking out at the world and saying hello, who's out there? What's going on? Um, yeah, I I truly think that was a great showcase. Um, like I said throughout the sh throughout watching it, people were saying temper your expectations. This is not going to be as wild as you think you all think it is. And it was, <laughs> you know, it, it actually was. And so, um, yeah, it's exciting. I think it's specifically to my interests as well. Jamie, thank you for hanging out. Bye. Love you. But yeah, I think specifically, you know, it, it called to a lot of things I'm passionate about. It had Mario Party with... Uh, over a hundred mini games and and classic maps, great. That'll be cool for me too, because I I think literally the only Mario Party I've played is the one. I think we that played got recently. Yeah, the the Switch one. I think we did play Mario Party two, like N sixty four, way back in like maybe on an emulator with a friend mm -hmm. once or twice. Maybe. Um. But no, yeah, it, it's a so great way to return. Yeah, it's a great way to return, and it's, it's some of the best of the whole franchise as far as mini games go, and map design and board design. So super exciting, um, and it could be the kind of thing where they could support that with DLC, where mm -hmm. throughout the year they could add more maps and boards from old games and and mini games if they feel like it. So great little honoring of the Mario Party franchise. They could do that, or they'll. Just, just make a new game yeah. <laughs> and sell they, it. Nintendo's <laughs> been good. Nintendo's been good about supporting some of these games for a long time. So they, they've they've gotten better. I say. They're not good. They've gotten better than they used to be. Um, but yeah, super excited about, about being able to hop into Mario Party. And it's online multiplayer. Everything that you could ask for from it. Yeah. So super great. And then the next big one for me... It's all these uh, honoring of classic franchises that 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 spoke to me. Um, WarioWare, whole new mini game design where you play as a, a multiple, or you play it's a like character based. You know, it's it's about the old games. You know, you would you would either tap the screen to interact or just push simple like if one button press kind of mini games. But this is like you're walking around with a character on a screen and trying to figure out how to to beat the mini game. And each character, and it's, uh, uh, the characters are all from the WarioWare franchise, so it's all these different characters you've met in the games in the past. Um, each character has different uh, mechanics. So there's um, some unique play there with um, um, trying to figure out, okay, how does how do I solve this minigame with this character? Um, and so that's super cool. And it's all brand new. So uh, opposite of really, you know, Mario Party and this other one I'm going to bring up, it's all brand new versus, you know, kind of an honoring of the franchise. So great to see WarioWare come back. I I, I think, uh, you know, again, you, you like you said, you, Nintendo's not a, a company that you have as much of a connection with. And I think WarioWare is a, is a game ser a franchise that I think you would love just because it's simple and goofy and fun and... Not saying you only like simple games, but I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just very, e it's very easy to hop into a WarioWare game with friends and just have fun. Yeah. And so. Uh, and it's co-op. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was the other thing. Good, good call. They added two player or two player mini games. Uh, both, it seems like to, to work together and against each other, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. 
Um, super fun. Super fun. Um, the game on screen right now would be the last thing I'd want to really highlight. Metroid Dread. It looks scary. Uh, Metroid has always had some kind of appeal of horror. Some level of horror has, has, has been in Metroid for a long time, but this looks genuinely off-putting and frightening that we got these creepy robots that are, you know, stalking you. And at one point they show one, like, really get Samus and pin her down and zap her in the face with a giant laser. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm into this direction they're taking with the, the Metroid series and again yeah this is coming what that's coming december right october no that's coming october 8th october 8th and um it's a great stopgap game for uh metroid prime 4 that a lot of people are excited for, excited for and waiting for um it's a great way to get that fan base as i just said fed <laughs> feed feed that fan base and they go okay i'm all full you can take your time you know <laughs> uh it's a great decision on nintendo's part and it, it looks it, it doesn't look like it doesn't look half-assed at all like it looks like it looks great agree so now i i did the, my halfway point check-in with you with the whole conference now in in, in the in the rear view I'll just I'll have you only have to pick one. What is your most uh exciting uh reveal? From the second half? Yeah. Or the whole thing. I mean I already told you the ones from the other from the first half. Um probably tie between Breath of the Wild 2, just because it's kind of similar to the outer wild, outer worlds too, mm. um, just being announced. Like where well, you're like, vague, oh, now I want to go back. Yeah, I've been like vaguely interested in playing the first, but I haven't. And you know, seeing the trailers and the hype for the next ones, I'm I'm a little bit more motivated, sort mm -hmm. of, to to go back and play those. Um, so that and also <laughs> Tony Hawk One and Two coming to Switch. I'm. I think that'll be a good one for me because sometimes, you know, I just want to play a little something in between the yeah, yeah. session or something. Um, that's kind of what I've been doing with, like, Knockout City and stuff. You know, stuff you can just jump into for a little round, a little few minutes. So I think that'll be yeah, and I remember I dive into. I remember when I got it on PC, you were, you were like, like, how is it? You're like, you were checking in a lot, like, oh, is it good? And, and, uh. You know, you had said you had, you know, yeah, I honestly a history with the you, franchise. I forgot that you got it on PC. I could have been playing it this whole time. <laughs> I had, I, yeah, I mean, I played it pretty nonstop for like a week and then like kind of dropped out of it because yeah. I'd beaten it. Uh, I played a little bit of multiplayer. Multiplayer is even really fun. Um, but uh, no, yeah, yeah. Tony Hawk is the slam dunk on the Switch. Anything else for you or? Uh, vaguely interested in, was it Fatal Frame that has the blue hair? No, that's Shin Megami Tensei. Oh. Probably more as a, watch. a game to, to watch, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you have played, uh, well, I guess Pokemon is an RPG to, to a certain extent, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, uh. Yeah, it's definitely not your your most interested and most intriguing like a, a genre that speaks to you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, no, the 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 vibe and the aesthetics of of that game look look great. Yeah, love the character, the long blue hair, non-binary, not hobino, non-binary. <laughs> That's now my uh, my only. <laughs> I don't know what it actually means. Like, who knows what I'm actually saying? It could be just the name of a monster too. It could be like the monster you're tied to or whatever. But uh, hope it's not anything bad. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I think on the whole, we're not gonna sit here and do like a whole of E3 wrap up too. But on the whole, you know, E3 was super rad. Um, 
I think I see a lot of people out there complaining about it being bad, but I think it's like you didn't watch the indie showcases then because those feature some of the most exciting releases I've seen in years. And, you know. And even the big ones, you know, even if they overall... There was at least one thing. Yeah, a lot of them were kind of like I was describing to you, like very roller coastery. There was like, it started out, you know, with a game I was like, eh, okay, and then... There'd be a couple of games, and then there'd be, like, a peak. And I'd yeah. be like, oh, well, okay. And then it'd have a lull for a little bit, and then it'd go back up. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. And at least, you know, everything... At least there was peaks. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I think, you know, the worst offenders were shows that probably weren't going to be great anyway. Like, yesterday, Capcom had an event, and it wasn't amazing. But even that had the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and that looked amazing. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and yeah, I think on the whole, you know, there's a lot to be excited about in gaming, uh, in 2021 and E3, while not reaching the peaks of some of the best E3s out there, E3 2021 was definitely uh, a fun one. And I, I mean, part of that could be because of video games are good. And the fact that we really embrace, uh, coverage this year, uh, hit a lot of stuff out, you know, got a lot of stuff onto the site this year to really try to keep up with all the chaos um, and, and and had streams and everything. What? <laughs> Fern's just smiling at the screen right now. I'm here to kill chaos. <laughs> I just can't hear the word anymore. Chaos is, chaos is ruined thanks to, what was that, Final Fantasy Origins, a, a stranger in paradise, I think? The the best part about that game looking so weird and bad and then and then you know was that it had a demo released that day and it was broken. No yeah. one could play it. It's just the 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 iconic cherry on top for that for that whole thing. But yeah, we had a lot of fun uh covering E3 with y'all. Um well, <laughs> Ragamuff says the camp. The funniest thing about it is it could be uh it could be that all the characters... So the main character in that game... Now we're talking about Final Fantasy, but... The main character in that game was just wearing a normalized button-up shirt. And we all were like, what is going on? Why is he... It's not even a button-up. It just had a few buttons at the top. But it was like a Hanes, like, black T V-neck type thing. And we were like, what's going on with that? And if you go to the website for the game, you saw that eat all three of the characters, there are, there are models of them in normal ass modern day clothes so we're like what's going on and the rumor is that it could be that they all get pulled out of the modern day world into final fantasy world and so i kind of you know now i understand you know this guy just he's like okay how do i get out of here i gotta kill chaos okay i'm here to kill chaos i don't have nothing else to say because i just need to get out of here i want to go home i want to kill chaos just got here where's chaos <laughs> so you know that's that that's fun but yeah, this is <laughs> so true. <laughs> Aeropostal models end up in a fantasy world where they're told kill k you have to kill chaos to go home. Um, so this isn't the end. The end for sure of, of our E3 coverage. Um, later on today, there is the GameSpot Play for All showcase here. Let me actually. I wanted to make sure I had the right time for that. That will be at. See, this already got me excited right here, seeing this. I was like, I okay. That's, that's uh, intriguing. It will take place at 3.35 here. I'll bring it I'll bring it on the screen here while we're looking at this nice piece of art here. Look at this. The Play for All Showcase. So this will be at 3.35 uh, on the GameSpot channels. Um, they worked with the Min Media Indie Exchange, the mix, which is also the the proprietors of the Gorilla Collective, so that's kind of fun. And they, they said they, they wanted to showcase games for all gamers, a divi di diverse range of games that, you know, folks of all sorts can, are able to play. They said there'll be 20 games showcased. Could be games we've already seen, but still, any new look at, at some of these hits that, that, that places like The Mix have been highlighting in, in, in these past few years um, is, is cool with us. So... Oh, is Dark Day is that where Dark Day is getting is showing up? 
So yeah, we're excited to to check this out. So that will be at 335 and that will officially be they said that'll be an hour long. That will officially be the end of our live streamed E3 coverage. But you can always like the cool hot 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 shot game journalists say keep it locked on videogamesgood.com for all kinds of new content. Today we will have shortly after this we, we go offline. We're going to go straight to work and eat, probably. We're going to go straight to work, though, on uh, uh, getting some new content up on the site. And I'm going to be writing some new content. Uh, Finishing up Toem, right? Is yeah. going up today? Yeah, we'll have a, a, a mini preview of Toem, which is a really cute, uh, if you hadn't seen it before. Toem. Uh, indie. <laughs> Does this have gameplay? Yeah, okay, so uh, this is the game. This was shown at the Wholesome Direct. It was shown at a few different places. And it's a photography adventure game. Uh, the demo will be live tomorrow. We got early access to it, thanks to the developers, so shout out to them. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll be, able, you'll be able to see what you can expect in the demo, my thoughts on it. Um, it's a great little game. Um, I'm excited to see the full release when it comes. Um, it's just so charming and so goofy and, and, and a fun concept. Um, so yeah, you get to, to see that mini preview shortly after the stream here today. Yeah. Um, and we will actually be launching daily mini previews of, of some of the games that are featured in the Steam Festival that is coming up. Um, where you can play all the demos of games that we are talking about. We wanted to specifically highlight some of these games because, as we've said several times throughout this entire event, there were literally hundreds of games showcased at E3 this year, and we wanted to make sure that some of these games didn't get uh, lost in the shuffle. <laughs> um, so we, we wanted to be able to spotlight some of those games, talk about them, and say, hey, if you like what you're reading here, go play it. Go check it out. Go wishlist it and buy it when it comes out because uh, we love indie developers and we want to make sure they get the, the spotlight they deserve amongst the chaos that is E3. <laughs> Fern can't hear it. Fern's right. They cannot hear that word without busting up. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, for the Nintendo showcase, I couldn't help myself. We went a bit over our uh, the schedule, what we thought we would do for that. I told you you would. I just got too excited. It was a it was a good show. It was a good show. Good job, Nintendo. You may have saved E three, um, but not because of E three. You did it on your own. E <laughs> three still has a lot to figure out. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you again at three thirty. Nice long break here in between. Um, but we hope to see a lot of you back for the indie showcase from GameSpot at 3.30. Alrighty. Go have a nice uh, rest, uh, chunk of your day while we uh, go eat and work. We're doing some sneaky work on the website as well. I can't say much more than that, but it's really exciting, y'all. I was getting <laughs> emotional last night. It's looking good. It is looking amazing. Okay, now you can say your wrap-up goodbye thing. Have a good day. We'll see you back here soon. Alrighty. Read our articles in between. Yeah. <laughs> Toem. <laughs>